Um, and we're going to talk about this topic of do running shoes cause injury and how do we know? So we'll kind of kick this off with his question and then we'll kind of dive into that, that big question of um, do running shoes cause injury and how do, we, how do we know? He wrote to us, he said, I just got back into running and when I got my first pair of shoes, I was advised to run in stability shoes. So the first proper pair was the Arahi 4, which is actually a really nice shoe, side note. I ran 300 plus kilometers, but one thing I got from it was runner's knee, which happened very often. Now I've geared up to the Kiona 28 based on recommendations. It feels flat and takes a lot of energy to run in them. Is that, uh, is that what maximum stability shoes should feel like? Or is this my legs? Or am I not rent meant to run in them in the first place? So that's kind of what he wrote to us. And I think that I think we should kind of hit that topic of how do, because I think he's running with the assumption here that his, there's so many questions we could ask him and we're not going to be able to actually answer his question directly to him, but I think there's a lot we could talk about. So for you guys, when you have somebody come in to see you who has knee pain, runner's knee pain, what are some of the potential causes of that knee pain for a new runner? This is a new runner. And do you, do you jump to shoes as the first thing that could be causing pain? So, so hold on. You want me to go through the list? How much? Time Not, no, 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 no. Give, give me an, give an idea. Crash course. Keep it brief. Let's let, let's let DJ go. Cause I think he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be so many things, especially if you're a new runner. I mean, nine times out of 10, these injuries are due to an overuse injury of some kind. Or you're just not Chances are, them. if you started running when you got the Arahi 4, you put 300K on it, that's going to be approximately, I mean, what is that, like 100 and something miles? I'm, I'm off right now. Yeah, yeah like oh, 1.8, yeah. roughly 180 or so yeah. miles. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's enough mileage to put on your legs if you're a new runner for something to just come up in general if you haven't worked on stability or strength conditioning leading up to this. Um, I mean, we can go down the whole laundry list of whether or not there's hip or ankle instability, yada, 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 putting extra shearing on the knee. We, we don't need to go into that, but, um, chances are it's probably an overuse thing. Wasn't quite ready to be taking on the task that they were taking on. I don't think I would immediately go to the shoes per se. Um, now the Arahi four does have a little bit more of a rocker on it. Maybe it shifts the load up to the, the hip and the knee a little bit more causing a little bit more tension to like that patellar ligament sure i don't know but um i think the main thing we need to look at is just habits and activity level and and conditioning before even putting those shoes on before even running 300 kilometers yeah now what do you what are your kind of big picture thoughts here me yeah you all right just okay. got permission now um it again the answer is always and my students hate me for this is it depends um, I think hearing that he's already put 300 kilometers on them makes me go, I'm not kind of, then it pops up, makes me not as worried. Whereas if he's like, I just got the shoes and I'm now just suddenly having pain in them, that would be more of an indicative factor. When we're assessing somebody new, there's a whole laundry list of variables that we're looking at. And you kind of have to, to ask yourself, yeah, you know, all of them could be contributing, but which one is probably the most significant if he's put that many miles on that, that probably makes me not as concerned. It makes me think more along the lines of, you know, again, as, as DJ mentioned, training, did you have any big changes in your training in terms of like, did you suddenly start doing something new, putting speed work in or jump your mileage up too much? Or what, is there anything else that changed? DJ, what? Oh, no, I just wanted to add too, if you're approaching 300K, I mean, if that's what, what what's a 3K? 1.9, 1.8? Yeah, 1.8. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 180, 190 miles. You're starting to approach the life of a shoe anyways. Yeah. I mean, if the industry standard's a little past 200 to 350, you know, um, or 250, 300, there's a chance that it's starting to deform a little bit more. Maybe there's a little bit more wear in certain areas and the geometry of it's changing. There's so many factors by the time you hit 300 kilometers that I don't think it's the shoe. Or you might need a new pair, right? Which sometimes yeah. people will switch in just the act of changing the surfaces that they're running on, which maybe the shoe makes them feel better for a little bit, but don't always assume that's the biggest thing. You might just need, again, it might just be, and we know from, there is plenty of evidence suggests that, or not plenty, but there's emerging evidence suggests that 
having a couple different pairs of shoes is better in terms of reducing your risk of it may reduce risk of injury just because it's like almost like cross training. But again, based on what he's telling me, it telling us it's not the first thing I would look at. However, new runners who maybe have been told like they're, they're running in a not so good pair of shoes. Like they're run, like something like a pair of vans, not to talk r- terrible about vans because they used to make really good, serious running shoes. You know, if they're running in a pair of vans, like, okay, this might not be, yeah. People used to like race in vans. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. yeah. Converse so, is a big company for that. Yeah. Bach so, is oh, sad that that's not the case anymore. I know, right? Vans, come on. Like you guys can do this. Let's see this. Um, but you know, I lost my train of thought. All right. Where was I? I don't know. Converse were racing. In a new that, runner, in a new yeah, runner, just... that might be something I'm thinking about. But you also have to recognize that running is a high impact activity. The injury rates, right? Percentages per year of like is like like almost like 50 to 90 percent of runners can get injured. That 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 there's a lot of evidence on that, and it kind of varies. But there's a fairly high injury rate, and one of the reasons is it's a high impact activity, and you need to make sure. You are strong enough and in shape enough to do this, right? Running is not something that you do to get in shape. You need to be in shape to run. That's very important. So, you, you, you know, if you're going to run, there's some things you need to work on. Strength, mobility, all this kind of stuff. And that's why people usually end up in our offices. But shoes is a factor, but it's not always going to be the biggest factor unless you've given us evidence to suggest that it was enough of a change and sudden enough to go, oh, maybe we should look at this. But hearing that, I'm not... That's not putting off as many red flags for this. Right. I think um, uh, just to kind of reiterate some of the things that you guys said, when somebody comes into our office, there are, we have a list of different potential causes for Mm -hmm. differential diagnosis and potential causes for that. And shoes is one of the factors, but there are only a few cases where that really sticks out as the cause. So, you know, our, our evaluations are going to include conversations about your training volume, changes in your training volume, meaning how many times a week, how long you're running, how far you're running, how fast you're running. And is that stuff changing? It's going to be talk. It's going to be looking at specific range of motion deficits that you might have. It's going to be looking at strength that you may have deficits in. And those are going to be the primary things that we look at in terms of pain causes. Shoes will be one of the questions we ask about because like Matt referenced, if you are a runner and you have not had pain and then you buy a new pair of shoes and then you develop pain that's consistent with the type of shoe you got, like let's say you never ran in a posted shoe, you got a posted shoe and then you get midfoot pain or like lateral knee pain. You're like, okay, those make sense with each other. So it's probably the shoe switch back to what you were used to. But it, most of the time, maybe that, and especially when it's kind of when he used the phrase runner's knee, so we don't actually know what he's talking about for exactly. But if it's this kind of vague knee pain, being able to tie that to a shoe type is actually difficult. But certain types of foot pain, you know, depending on the type of shoe, is easier to tie to the shoe than something like knee pain. So um, the shoe, how do you know? It's got to be probably... The, sh- the shoe can certainly, I would say it may be able to influence it, but being a direct cause, again, that you got to look at all the variables there. Right. So I think the reality kind of going back to that main question, yes, running shoes can cause injury. Um, but how do you know? It's usually when you are, are consistent in one type of shoe and you have an, a change in your shoe and then the pain comes immediately and it's consistent with that change of shoe type. Um, the other thing he talked about was um, the Kyono 28 feeling flat. I feel like that's just the Kyono 28. <laughs> no, wait, wait, no, no, no trash on the Kyono 28. I think David, you had a pair. Nathan, did you have a pair? No, <clears throat> I gave, I gave, I gave mine to. Yeah, Nathan I gave mine to handle Ryan. posted shoes like that. The Kyono series is a very heavily cushioned and a very heavy shoe, and some people really like that. They do very well in that shoe type. That's fine. Um, other people that haven't run an issue that that's heavy, it can feel a little sluggish. Um, I know that I, I enjoyed it for walking for me. I prefer lighter shoes. So it wasn't my favorite shoe, um, for that reason. They did a lot of very interesting things with that shoe in terms of some new age stability methods, but it's still heavy. And so there's some people who have been wearing the Keanu their whole life and they're used to that, but that's a, that's a factor that you need to put in, that you need to take into account. If you're, if you put a shoe on 
and you're like, everything feels good, but it's just way too heavy, you might need to consider changing, right? Because that's going to affect your comfort. And we know that comfort can, like discomfort can also lead to an injury risk. So you just want to make sure that the shoe is comfortable throughout. So the Kiana 28 for you may not be appropriate for that reason. 